Hi everyone, welcome back to our video updates. It's Shade, and today's question is about powers of attorney, how they work, what they're about, and when they're if effective. So I'm talking about general power of attorneys in this particular video because you do have the general power of attorney and you have the medical power of attorney. The general one is for things that we do in daily living, um, decisions that we make in life, but not medical decisions. So um, it's for educational purposes as always, and I'm talking from the perspective of Texas law, but um, the laws are similar across the United States. Um, some states have specific things that must be included in the instrument that's giving the powers. So make sure to consult an attorney in your state if you have questions about a power of attorney. So they have the medical type and the general type, and the general type covers all sorts of transactions typically, unless you give somebody a limited power of attorney. The party that's giving the other party uh, the powers is called the grantor, and the other person that's receiving the powers is called the agent. The agent would then go ahead and step into the shoes of the grantor and make decisions as if they were that person. So they don't necessarily have to go into lengthy discussions with the grantor to be able to make decisions, for instance. Um, so that brings us to the term general durable power of attorney. I'm sure you've seen that before. The durable part implies that the power of attorney continues even if the grantor is incapacitated. So that means if the grantor becomes ill or is in an accident and not able to speak, the power of attorney is still good. And when you have the durable one, which is what I would recommend if you really trust the agent, then that agent is able to make decisions for you when you're not able to make decisions. So the power of attorney actually, may, generally speaking, they can make decisions when you are able to make decisions, but they can also make decisions if it's durable when you're not able to make decisions. So that tends to confuse people because they think, oh, when somebody falls ill, then the power of attorney goes away. It does not. Some other people think that, well, the power of attorney is not effective as long as I, the grantor, am doing well and healthy. But that's not true either. You could be healthy, but you're in another country, so you give your sister the power of attorney so that they can continue to do transactions for you in the United States. So those are some of the benefits of having an agent. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to mention because people ask, um, is, uh, well, what if my mom is already in a coma right now or she already has dementia or something like that? Can I get a power of attorney from her? And I've had family members fight over this. So you cannot get a power of attorney from somebody that's uh, without capacity. That's what the law says. So the term capacity is a legal term and you will have to talk to a lawyer to figure that out if you're not sure. But if they have a diagnosis of say Alzheimer's, or they may not have capacity, but some people do have early stages of dementia, but they have moments of lucidity. And so they're still able to have capacity in flashes. And so that is almost like in the gray areas, be very careful when you're using that um, to get a power of attorney when somebody is not otherwise super healthy or super conscious, for instance, or super present. So those things might cause problems in the future. If somebody is in a coma, absolutely not. They're not able to sign anything. Um, if they are uh, not able to speak, not, if we're not really sure if they're able to understand, let's say they just had a stroke, uh, maybe that's not the best time to get a power of attorney from that person because it could definitely be contested in the future. So um, it's best to get it when the person has full capacity and of course they have to be an adult. Um, those are the little preliminary things. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that the agent uh, will have whatever powers are listed out inside the document. So if it's a limited power of attorney, like I said, it could be just for you to be able to sell a particular property or to be able to handle a particular bank account, but they don't give you all of their powers. So then you can only deal according to the powers that are inside the power of attorney document that you have. You have the right as a as the agent usually to delegate your powers to other people. So you could, for instance, choose a CPA to help you with banking transactions, or you could have a realtor help you with real estate transactions um, and act on your behalf, just like 
the owner, the grantor would have done. The document usually says that you have a right to reasonable compensation, so whatever that means, but you can also set a specific amount that you're supposed to get each year um, inside the document, so that's already clear. The other thing that you would want to keep in mind is that you have to list out those powers, as I said, and typically the general durable powers of attorney allows somebody to do transactions like the original person would have done, the grantor. So they can do real estate transactions, which include selling, you know, taking out a mortgage, um, rentals, uh, rental agreements, things like that. And they can also do transactions to do with banking. Um, they can do transactions to do with trading, maybe stocks, bonds, or commodities, things like that. And they can also do transactions to do with benefits, like Social Security benefits, uh, Medicaid, Medicare, you know, and just handle all of the paperwork for the grantor um, and tax uh, returns um, and even things to do with other assets that uh, that people have like cars. They can handle that for you and do the transferring, selling, buying, things like that. So those are usually the general powers that are in there. The power of attorney is good until the person dies, the grantor. Um, and of course, a lot of people do want to use the power of attorney after somebody is dead. Um, and I tell them, you know, you cannot do that. It's only good while the other person is alive, you know, the grantor. And this is because a dead person cannot give you authority to do things, right? They can only tell you their wishes inside a will. So the power of attorney will not work when somebody is dead. So keep that in mind. The time frame for the power of attorney can actually be designated inside the document. So you can tell people... Uh, that the document is good for a few years. Let's say you're going out of the country, like I said, for a few years, you can put that in there and say it's only good for two years and then it expires, you know. You could also leave it open so that it's always good until you revoke it. You do have the power as a grantor to revoke the power of attorney and that is usually done by having another document done, like a revocation, or you could do a new power of attorney if you're going to do that and elect another agent and say inside the new document that you're revoking the last one or whichever one is out there. Um, and of course, I always recommend that you record your power of attorney with the county um, where you live. Um, and if you have real estate in other counties, also record the power of attorney there so that the whole world can figure out really quickly who your agent is. You don't have any issues with fraud or anything like that. So the other common question that we get is, um, I, as the agent, do I sign the name of the person that gave me the power when I'm signing documents. Well, actually you don't do that. You should sign your own name. So you'll sign as Jane Doe and then agent for ABC, you know, whoever the grantor is. So that's how you would sign it so that everybody knows that you're signing as an agent. And of course you're not liable as long as you're doing things within the powers given to you. So you do have discretionary powers because the grantor gave you authority to make decisions because they trusted you. And if you abuse that power, then there could be issues. But generally speaking, as long as you're making decisions for the benefit of the grantor, you should be fine. And according to the powers given to you inside the document. So those are the things that I thought I would outline. So remember, it doesn't work if the person is already in a coma already. Um, without capacity and you're trying to get a power of attorney from them, you cannot do that. It also doesn't work if the person is dead, even though they give you the power of attorney while they were alive and it was a valid one while they were alive, but you cannot use it anymore once they die. It doesn't work once the person revokes the power of attorney by notifying you, um, typically in writing, but even if they notify you verbally, I think that will be sufficient if they can prove it. Uh, but definitely it doesn't work if they've revoked it uh, with a written instrument and especially if they filed it of record and they gave you a copy and then last but not least don't sign in the name of the other person because you're not them but you are the agent so sign in your name and just add the little part as agent of so and so so that's the quick overview for you if you have questions related to texas state you can definitely reach out to us on our website otherwise consult a lawyer in your state um, and if you have any specific questions that you'd like me to cover in future videos, remember to leave a comment below and I'll be happy to do so. Thanks for watching as always and I'll talk to you next time.